Hi, my name is Pamela Coons, Associate Professor of Medicine in the Division of Oncology at Yale School of Medicine and Yale Cancer Center. I'm excited to announce ASCO's new open access journal, JCO Oncology Advances. As the inaugural editor-in-chief, I hope to support JCO Oncology Advances to become the premier platform to bridge the gap between accessible scientific research and clinical care. Stay tuned for more information, including new article types, at ascopubs.org forward slash JCO Oncology Advances. We look forward to seeing your submissions in spring of 2024. This JCO podcast provides observations and commentary on the JCO article Prognostic Significance of MIC Rearrangement and Translocation Partner in Diffuse Large B-Cell Lymphoma, a study by the Lunenburg Lymphoma Biomarker Consortium by Rosenwald et al., My name is Jeremy Abramson, and I am an attending physician at the Massachusetts General Hospital and an associate professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School. My oncologic specialty is lymphoma. MIC rearrangements occur in approximately 10% of diffuse large B-cell lymphomas and have been associated with a worse prognosis. When the MIC translocation occurs in concert with translocations of BCL2, BCL6, or both, Initial series have suggested particularly poor outcomes, with few patients achieving long-term survival with conventional therapies. This entity has been classified in the current WHO classification as high-grade B-cell lymphoma with rearrangements of MYC and BCL2 and or BCL6, and is more conventionally known as double or triple hit lymphoma. Though initial series painted a grim prognosis for these patients, More recent larger series have suggested that approximately 40% of double-hit lymphoma patients may be cured, and that outcomes may be improved with more intensive regimens such as dose-adjusted EPOC-R. Most of these published series to date, however, continue to be limited by significant selection bias, whereby cases with the most aggressive clinical or histopathologic features are likelier to be tested for MIC translocations in the first place, thus potentially excluding more prognostically favorable patients. The small size of series to date has also made it difficult to assess more granular questions in MIC translocated diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, hereafter referred to as DLBCL, such as the prognostic impact of MIC translocations when occurring without other translocations, the impact of translocation partner with MYC in double-hit lymphoma, i.e. immunoglobulin or non-immunoglobulin gene locus, and finally, the significance of MYC BCL6 double-hit lymphomas, which are far less common than MYC and BCL2 cases. Another practical question is who should we be testing for MYC translocations in the first place? Do we need to test every new case of DLBCL, or should we routinely test only an enriched population? such as those with MYC protein expression by immunohistochemistry, or germinal center-like DLBCLs, which include the majority of double-hit lymphomas. In the article that accompanies this podcast, the Lunenburg Lymphoma Biomarker Consortium presents the single largest and most systematic analysis to date of MYC translocations in DLBCL, and sheds significant light on many of the most outstanding questions in this population. The consortium studied over 2,000 cases of DLBCL with available tissue and clinical data, drawn from large prospective cooperative group studies, as well as population-based registries in Canada, the United Kingdom, and the United States. The median age of the cohort was 66 years, and the median follow-up was mature at greater than six years. All patients were treated with RCHOP or RCHOP-like therapy. MIC rearrangements were found in 11% of patients. One-third of these occurred as a sole rearrangement, 39% as a double hit in concert with a BCL2 rearrangement, 15% as a double hit in concert with a BCL6 rearrangement, and 12% with both MIC and BCL2 and BCL6, a so-called triple hit lymphoma. Patients with MIC rearrangements had higher risk features by the IPI score than the entire DLBCL population, and patients with double and triple hit lymphoma had higher clinical risk factors than patients with MIC rearrangements alone. Patients with double or triple hit lymphoma had a significantly inferior outcome in terms of both progression-free and overall survival compared to the DLBCL cohort at large, while no negative prognostic impact was conferred by a MIC translocation alone. Notably, 
the prognostic impact in double hit lymphoma was only observed in the first two years from diagnosis. They also compared the 31 MYC BCL6 double hit patients with 82 MYC BCL2 double hit cases and found similar outcomes in both groups, validating that MYC BCL6 double hit lymphomas should be considered high risk along with their BCL2 translocated double hit counterparts. Prognosis for triple hit lymphoma was no worse than double hit lymphoma. Perhaps most striking, however, was how well double and triple hit lymphoma patients did when compared to previously published retrospective studies. In this comprehensive evaluation by the consortium, approximately 60% of double and triple hit lymphoma patients remained progression-free beyond five years, and two-thirds remained alive. These remarkable data suggest that the majority of double and triple hit lymphoma patients identified by broad screening of the DLBCL population may be cured with chemoimmunotherapy and should offer encouragement to patients and providers alike. Importantly, the consortium's analysis includes only patients with DLBCL morphology, so excluded double and triple hit lymphoma patients with Burkitt, Burkitt-like, or blastoid histology who may have an inferior outcome compared to the double hit lymphoma patients in this analysis. MYC and BCL2 protein expression, so-called dual or double expressor lymphomas, was also analyzed in 1,414 cases with available tissue. MYC expression, greater than or equal to 40%, and BCL2 protein expression, greater than or equal to 50%, was associated with an inferior outcome compared to the general DLBCL population, though better than double-triple hit lymphomas, and notably, the majority of dual expressor patients remained free from progression and alive at greater than two years of follow-up after treatment with RCHOP-like therapy. On evaluation by cell of origin, patients with GCB-like DLBCL had a slightly more favorable outcome compared to non-GCB patients as defined by immunohistochemistry. GCB-like DLBCL more commonly had MYC rearrangements and exclusively contained the MYC BCL2 subset of double hit lymphoma, while MYC BCL6 double hit cases occurred within both cell of origin subgroups. These robust data from this large systematic analysis address several pressing questions regarding MYC rearranged DLBCL. First, they tell us that a MYC rearrangement in the absence of a rearrangement of BCL6 and or BCL2 does not predict an adverse outcome in DLBCL and may be treated as a routine DLBCL with RCHOP-like therapy. Second, we learn that MYC translocation partner in the setting of a double or triple hit lymphoma matters, with the negative prognosis driven by MYC immunoglobulin translocations rather than MYC rearranged with a non-immunoglobulin partner, which does not confer a negative prognosis. Third, while MYC BCL6 double hit lymphomas are uncommon, they appear to predict similarly inferior outcomes as MYC BCL2 double hit lymphomas and triple hit lymphomas. And fourth, very importantly, the outcome of double triple hit DLBCL, though inferior to the entire DLBCL population, appears much better than previously estimated, with approximately two-thirds of patients achieving long-term, progression-free, and overall survival when treated with standard chemoimmunotherapy. It warrants emphasis that this applies to cases morphologically classified as DLBCL, not necessarily to cases with Burkitt-like or blastoid features, which were not included in the consortium study and likely have a less favorable outcome. For this reason, it is essential that pathologists signing out cases as aggressive B-cell lymphoma with translocations of MYC and BCL2 and or BCL6 also indicate the morphologic subtype as DLBCL versus a higher grade histologic appearance, as this information will be essential for clinicians in applying these findings to prognostication in the clinic. Finally, this study provides us critically needed guidance in determining which cases warrant evaluation with fluorescence in situ hybridization, or FISH, to detect MYC, BCL2, and BCL6 rearrangements. Presently, practice patterns are mixed, with some centers testing all cases for MYC, while others test only enriched populations such as GCB-like DLBCL 
or Double Express or DLBCL, and still others do not routinely evaluate MYC at all in diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. The consortium data validate that MYC translocations in DLBCL affect a sufficient proportion of the population and confer sufficient prognostic importance as to warrant testing. They also show us that conventional immunohistochemistry for either cell of origin or MYC and BCL2 double expression status are not sufficient to direct FISH testing. Testing only GCB-like DLBCL would indeed identify all cases of MYC BCL2 double hit lymphomas, but would fail to identify a significant proportion of MYC BCL6 double hit cases. Performing FISH only on cases meeting current immunohistochemical thresholds for MYC and BCL2 double protein expression would fail to identify more than one quarter of cytogenetically defined double hit lymphomas, which would also be unacceptable. These data therefore support testing all newly diagnosed cases of DLBCL and high grade B cell lymphoma with FISH for MYC. A positive FISH assay for MYC should prompt reflexive testing for both BCL2 and BCL6 rearrangements, which would then differentiate cases of single-hit cases with MYC translocations alone from the higher-risk double and triple-hit lymphoma patients. The fact that the prognostic impact of double and triple-hit lymphoma is seen only within the first two years from diagnosis underscores the need to optimize upfront therapy in these diseases. The data from the Lunenburg Lymphoma Biomarker Consortium suggests that RCHOP-like therapy remains an acceptable standard of care in double expressor DLBCL, DLBCL cases with isolated MYC rearrangements, and perhaps even double and triple HIT lymphomas with DLBCL morphology. Though notably, these latter cases have increasingly been treated with more intensive regimens such as dose-adjusted EPOC-R based on prior series. In the absence of data clearly supporting one approach versus the other, I would consider either intensive approaches or standard RCHOP as reasonable considerations in cases of double hit lymphoma with DLBCL morphology, and treatment should always be individualized to the patient. Ultimately, we would like to overcome biological liabilities with biologically directed therapies, and the U.S. intergroup is now conducting a randomized clinical trial evaluating chemoimmunotherapy with or without the BCL2 inhibitor venetoclax, specifically in double hit and double expressor lymphomas, with the chemoimmunotherapy backbone being dose-adjusted EPOC-R for double hit lymphomas and RCHOP for double expressor lymphomas. Participation in this important study is encouraged. This concludes this JCO podcast. Thank you for listening. The purpose of this podcast is to educate and to inform. This is not a substitute for professional medical care and is not intended for use in the diagnosis or treatment of individual conditions. Guests on this podcast express their own opinions, experience, and conclusions. The mention of any product, service, organization, activity, or therapy should not be construed as an ASCO endorsement. For more original research, editorials, and review articles, please visit us online at jco.org. This production is copyrighted to the American Society of Clinical Oncology. Thank you for listening.